Today I'd like to talk about screws and wedges. Uh, I'd like to talk about the actual and theoretical mechanical advantage of these simple machines. Now here we have figure 8-5, uh, mostly upside down. The force uh, that, the nut, that the nut sees is actually going to be our output force. And then the force of the screw, or the, actually the torque of the screw, is going to be our input force or torque. So turning the screw raises or lowers the nut. The actual mechanical advantage differs depending on whether you're raising the nut or lowering the nut. The theoretical mechanical advantage doesn't matter which way you're turning. And in, 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 in screws, we have uh, what's called a lead uh, and we also have a pitch. If it's a single threaded screw, as, we're, as is shown here, the, the, the lead is actually equal to the pitch. The tangent of the lead angle is the lead or the pitch divided by their circumference uh, of the mean diameter of the screw. And here we're showing square threads. Actually showing right-handed threads, since the threads go to the right, uh, square threads. Raising the nut requires the, the, the screw be turned counterclockwise as being viewed from the below here. So then our mechanical advantage here, strictly speaking from a screw standpoint, is going to be the output force here divided by the input torque. In this case, the mechanical advantage actually has units since you have a force divided by an input torque. But we could take the mean diameter divided by 2 or the radius and relate that uh, that torque, the raising torque, to a raising force. The raising force is actually the force associated with a wedge. So let's talk about the wedge and how we get the wedge from the screw. Go back and take a look at the screw. We could take one thread and unwrap that one thread like so. And the lead angle, remember, is the pitch advance divided by the circumference, which would be one thread all the way unwrapped. So we take that one thread unwrapped and we model it as a wedge. And for raising the screw, we're going counterclockwise as viewed from the bottom. This is kind of the same thing as going right to left. So it kind of makes sense. So the counterclockwise turning of the screw is like going right to left of the wedge. And this causes the quote unquote nut to raise. So this looks like the nut here. And, and this is the screw or wedge. Let's take away the nut and where the nut was, let's replace the nut with a normal force that acts against the screw or wedge, and then a resisting frictional force uh, uh, with the lowercase f being the coefficient of friction between the nut and the wedge, and the capital M being the normal force acting between the nut and the wedge. The objective here is we want to get a relationship between the output force which is our nut force F, divided by the input force, which is our pushing or raising force of P sub R. That gives us our mechanical advantage, actual mechanical advantage. So if we were to take a summation of forces in the vertical direction here, uh, P sub R doesn't enter into it. We do have F, which goes up, so it's positive. And then we have uh, the N, uh, with a cosine of lambda projection uh, going down, so that's a minus n cosine lambda. The frictional force F times n has a vertical uh, component that is sine of lambda, so that gives us another term. Setting all that equal to zero and solving for n, we end up with this. So our objective is to get F divided by, divided by P sub R 
we need to really get rid of n. So this gives us the ability to get a relationship for n. So then if we do a summation of forces in the horizontal direction, we've got p sub r going to the left, so let's put a minus sign on that. And then um, we've got our frictional force Fn with a component uh, cosine of lambda horizontally in the going left to right, so that has a positive sign on it. And then we have um, uh, also going to the right, we have N with a sine lambda uh, in a positive direction. So here solving for P sub R, we get a relationship in terms of N and F and lambda. We already know N from the last slide, so we can substitute that in, and we get a very, we're getting very close to what we want here. P sub R is a function of F, uh, the, the, the applied nut force F, and the frictional force smaller, lowercase f, and then the cosine and sine of lambda. So dividing the previous by cosine of lambda top and bottom and simplifying gives us uh, a, an improved relationship. It gives us uh, uh, the relationship where we have tangent of lambda and f uh, inside the braces. Now recall we want f divided by p sub r. So what we can do is we can use this relationship to get our mechanical advantage right here. So it's in terms of the coefficient of friction and the tangent of lambda. And that again is the mechanical advantage to raise the load. To get the theoretical mechanical advantage, we could take, simply take that previous relationship and set friction equal to zero. Then we get their familiar result, one divided by the tangent of lambda. So in summary, for raising the wedge, we have coefficient of friction as lowercase f. We have our theoretical mechanical advantage, uh, m star sub r is 1 over tangent of lambda. We have our actual mechanical advantage as modeled with friction as being 1 minus f times tangent of lambda divided by tangent of lambda plus f. Then we can actually look at our efficiency, and we could use our p sub r relationship where we have p sub r without friction, or p sub r star, divided by p sub r with friction. We could do it that way, or we could look at the ratio of actual mechanical advantage to theoretical mechanical advantage, and either way, we get the relationship shown here. You can see that friction uh, does affect efficiency here. And um, we will have some numerical examples later, but you see the effect here. Going back to the mechanical advantage entry here, uh, you should study this to see if there's any funny things that could go on here. Well, F, ordinarily F is going to be uh, definitely less than a quarter. And also uh, the tangent of lambda is going to be probably less than a quarter. So nothing here, and this, there are going to be positive values here, so nothing here is going to go, you're not going to have a denominator going to zero. Um, your, your numerator is never going to go negative. So uh, this looks like it's well behaved for raising the wedge. So efficiency to raise, here I took uh, that, that efficiency function and put in some lambda values and, put, and just took an example coefficient of friction of 0.05 which might be like a bronze nut, bronze screw kind of thing, and uh, took, took some different lambdas and looked at the efficiency. And what you can see right away is if you have a good mechanical advantage, like a low lambda, when you have a low lambda, that gives you uh, 1 over the tangent of uh, lambdas uh, being a high value. So these are high mechanical advantage here. And you see that you end up with sort of a low efficiency and you get the efficiency of about a half when the tangent of lambda is about equal to the friction. And then to get the efficiency up, you actually have to lower the mechanical advantage. So there's some trade-offs there uh, when you do have friction. Lowering the nut requires the screw to be turned clockwise as viewed from below. And here we're still supporting that uh, force on the way down. So our mechanical advantage is going to be that force divided by that torque that you're inputting. And again, we can take and look at unwrapping the thing and, and relating that 
turning torque to basically now what would be a pulling force that we would have on our wedge. And here we're going clockwise so with our screws, so it's almost like we're going uh, left to right with our wedge, and that's exactly the way it looks here when we put it together. So lowering the wedge, we're actually going to be pulling the wedge out and still supporting that same load that we had previously. So here, um, it's good to note that since we're pulling left to right, our friction force is actually going to oppose that motion. And uh, so the, the direction of the friction force changes. So when we sum, sum our forces in the vertical direction, we still have our F going up. We have our minus and cosine lambda uh, going down. And now we've got our uh, Fn, our friction times normal force, uh, and times the sine of lambda actually going down now. So now when we solve for lambda, we end up with this relationship that we'll substitute. Summation of forces in the horizontal direction leads, well, now we've got our PL going left to right. We've got our uh, Fn cosine lambda going the opposite direction. And then we have our N sine lambda uh, going uh, in the positive direction. Solving for PL leads this, gives, it, gives us this relationship here. And then substituting for N gives us the, a good relationship to move forward with. Dividing that previous relationship by cosine lambda uh, get, gets us almost to the finish line here. Um, we'll come back and look at this relationship as well again. But from the above, the mechanical advantage then can be determined as uh, 1 plus f tangent lambda divided by f minus tangent lambda. So here we again coefficient of friction, and when we look at our theoretical mechanical mechanical advantage, we have the, the minus one divided by tangent lambda. That's signifying that we're that we're we've changed the direction of our input force is what that's doing. Um, our lowering mechanical advantage I've repeated here. Um, here's where we really want to take a look at some bad things that can happen. And um, the, de the denominator here could, uh, could kind of blow up on us because uh, we're kind of looking for mechanical advantage for it to be meaningful. We, it would be a positive value. And so we need to be really careful what's going on in the denominator of this of this relationship. Um, if F, so we want to know what happens if F is greater than the tangent of lambda. That's one case, and that's kind of a well-behaved case. And then we also want to look at the second case when this coefficient of friction is less than the tangent of lambda, what's actually going on there. So that's the second case. So the first case, and when, when f is greater than the tangent of lambda, it is, it is possible that you can take your hands off and leave PL as zero, and, and then the screw nut combination is then self-locking when this case is true. This means the nut cannot back drive the screw, and you can think of it as a low lead, low, low lead angle, uh, or a high coefficient of friction would cause this. This development assumes that there is motion in, in the preceding the friction force between the weight or nut and the wedge is, is this lowercase f times n, where the friction forces, the friction coefficient is set by the materials that are in contact, for example, the brass nut, steel screw, or brass screw. Uh, when there is no motion or impending motion, the actual friction force is less. For example, F star uh, times N is less than F times N, where F star is an effective friction coefficient so that it's less than the actual friction coefficient that is set by the materials. So in that case, your PL would be equal to F, and then you would substitute here your F star uh, relationship here and um, if it's impending motion then the F star is actually equal to the tangent of lambda here these two would be equal this gives us the possibility that PL could be zero for a non zero F and everything would be in static equilibrium so that's the case when there's impending motion 
Or it's self-locking where the F is greater than the tangent of lambda. If, S, if F is less than the tangent of lambda, then the screw is not self-locking and it's possible for the nut to backdrive the screw. This negative sign here uh, then changes the direction of PL. It makes PL act more like a holding force. The nut really falls unless the holding force is there. You can think of low friction or high lead angle for this. In summary, some things to consider. On raising, friction can really affect efficiency. And on lowering, friction can hold the nut and prevent it from back driving the screw. And that concludes our discussion for the day.